Room objects in Revit have a variety of properties associated with them. And we can see some of those properties if we zoom in and then find one of these rooms that we've placed inside of our space. In this case, we have Entry 2. And I'm going to move my mouse until I see that X crossing through Entry 2. Click when you see that X, and you'll be able to see the entire room highlighted in blue. Underneath Properties, you'll then see that this room is hosted on Level 1. Currently, it has what's called a limit offset of 10 feet, meaning this room is currently 10 feet high. Scroll down on the list. These materials and finishes are materials and finishes that I entered in for a previous exercise. That's the reason why they're in there now. Dimensions show the total area. It also will give information related to the perimeter in cubic feet. This is where such things as the room number as well as the room name reside. The tag is actually a dumb object. It gets its information from the number and the name that shows up here in the room object. And there are some default wall, floor, ceiling, base finish categories that can be manually entered in that just come with these room objects to begin with. One of the properties that I wanted to point out up here where we have dimensions. And right now, we can see that there's a volume listed here and it has X number of cubic feet. If yours has that, great. If it doesn't have that, this is the reason why it doesn't have that. I'm going to come underneath the Architecture tab here, move over here to Room and Area, and click on the words Room and Area. In fact, anytime you see the words with the little down arrow next to it, select on Area and Volume Computations, and make sure that Areas and Volumes has a dot in it. If only Areas is, then you would not see any information showing up as far as what the total volume would be. So put a dot there, and then click on OK. When you do that, and you're selecting on the room, you'll then see the total volume for that room. But there's one other thing that we need to make sure of. If we double click right here, and this is the section that's going through our entry level, currently we can't see the room objects inside of this view. In fact, it'd be very hard to even accidentally hit on one of these room objects by just moving through the room. But what we can do is we can go into what's called visibility graphics to see it. If you move over here and on the properties, it says Visibility Graphics and click the big gray edit button. Scroll down on the list and we're looking for the word rooms. It's all alphabetical, so we're just looking for the R's. Expand out the little plus next to that and then put a check next to Interior Fill and Reference and click on OK. We can now see the interior fill color as well as this X, consider the reference lines for this room. Now we can highlight on where that X is at, click, and see the properties for this space. Even though the room says that it's 10 feet tall and we can see the limit offset right here, it's not actually taking its volume all the way up to the 10 foot mark. What happens is floors, ceilings, and walls are all objects which are called room bounding objects. What this means is that up to a 10 foot elevation, this room can give you its correct amount of cubic feet of volume. Because it's only going up to the ceiling, we can see that the cubic feet here of volume is going to be 22,435 cubic feet. If we click where the double arrow is here and drag this down, now the cubic feet is lower than the ceiling, and we can see that the total volume is now smaller. So Revit's rooms have some extra controls associated with them. And I'm just going to select back on the room and drag this back up. And we'll see it automatically gets bound by that ceiling. And some of the properties that are going to be associated with these rooms include the total area, the total cubic feet, as well as information related to the materials of the walls and the name and number of that space that we're currently looking at.